Tim. So um, welcome everybody. Thanks for being here on time. Um, so we have our two guests already here, uh, uh, Miguel Olivares and Alexis Arevalo. Uh, they, um, uh, I'll have, I'll give David, uh, David uh, uh, the honors of presenting them. So whenever you're ready, uh, David. Hello, um, thanks for being here. Um, today we have two guest lectures, as you mentioned. Um, the first one um, is, is Miguel Olivares, who is the director of Urban Mobility Department for the municipality of Santiago de Chile. Um, he's a civil engineer with a degree from the Universidad Mayor in Santiago de Chile and has received masters in urban design through architecture, transportation, and mobility in Spain by the Universidad Internacional de Valencia and the Universidad Camilo José Tela in Madrid. And he created the first and second integral plan for mobility for both Santiago de Chile and the country of Chile. Um, and has worked in improving urban public spaces, pedestrianization of the city, bicycling infrastructure, etc. And has received many awards and topics such as sustainability in transportation, mobility, infrastructure, and engineering such as the One City Planet Challenge 2018 by the World Wildlife Fund Foundation. And we also have Alexis Adevalo Castro, who is also a civil engineer and a transport traffic engineer. He began work in 2003, working on highways for the Vespucio Norte Highway in Santiago de Chile. Um, and in 2013, he also joined the office of the municipality of Santiago de Chile, where he also works on sustainable mobility um, and public spaces. Um, he has also worked in pedestrianization of cities, creating bike paths, working in public transportation, and also co-authored the two integral mobility plans for Chile um, and the city, and has received numerous national and international awards. So thank you for coming um, and I'll leave it off to you. Okay, so whenever you guys um, are ready, thanks for coming. So Alexis, I think you are going to be the one, right, presenting. Okay, um, hello everyone. Uh, thank you for the presentation. Um, you have to excuse my English, it's been a long time since I speak. Uh, I lived in Canada for six years, but I came back in, to Chile when I was 17. So it's been a long time since since I, I do a talk in English. So if, if you have any questions, just ask me later and then um, I'll try to do my best. <laughs> okay. Okay, do you see the, the screen? Can you yes. see the presentation? Yes, okay. perfect. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Okay, so I'm gonna present uh, what we do with Miguel uh, in the urban mobility department of the municipality of Santiago, Chile. Okay, um, well, first of all, uh, when we got together as a team in 2000, 2013, we started to talk about how we can change the city to a more friendly city. And we, start, we started uh, looking for future projects that could uh, change the face of the city. And in that case, we started to, uh, we started to, we started to write the first integral mobility plan in 2014. So we can gen uh, generate uh, guidelines for the mobility and public Public spaces for the for the municipality projects because many were based on uh, just the automobile or how we, how to avoid uh, traffic jams. So we we said, what about sustainable mobility? What about the cycles, the pedestrians, and the public transport? So this uh these guidelines uh and this this plan that we wrote uh, got the attention of a lot of uh, authorities and private uh, companies. So they started, in better, um, they started to pre, uh, help us to 
make some uh, make new projects of mobility, prioritizing the inverted pyramid of mobility, which is I think I don't know if you all know is the, the pedestrians first, then the cyclists, then the tra public transport, then the the motor vehicles. Okay. So the PIM, as we call it in, in Spanish, or the Integral Mobility Plan, was the kickoff for a new mobility projects. So what we did is uh, we focused on pedestrians, public spaces uh, that were that were used by that were um, taken by the cars, uh, cycles, and in public transport. So how are we different? Of, uh, of what we of what the municipality used to do every day, uh, we plan uh, our plan our planning is about the mobility of people, okay, and not cars. So I, I'm, I hear, here here I uh, I show you a picture of a of a street corner where first uh, the the municipality uh, this was before in the in the the one in the in the left. Uh, how the traffic management was taken, or how was a how how did the municipality said it was good for the for the downtown area to to cover the the security of for the people and the cars, and what we did on in one of the projects, uh, the other and the one in the right, we could see how a, a urban mobility project looks like. So we took uh, that fence right. We took uh, we we made the 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 street intersection bigger for the for the pedestrians because in the downtown area there are more pedestrians than cars, and uh, if you can see uh, where where the cars are, we took one lane off the of the of the automobiles and from three we went to two, so that's basically what we're we, we want to show you is that we focus on the people, um, how the people move. And, and, and basically we, we take out uh, the, the automobiles that are, that are the ones that take the much space and that, uh, so we prioritize the, the pedestrians and the public and the people that use the, 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 the public transport and the cycles. Okay, so what, what do we do? We count people. How, how do we how do we go to an authority and say, look, we, we have to change the street, we have to, make it better is that um, most of the studies, <clears throat> the, the transport studies here in Chile, they count cars or count public transport, but they don't count pedestrians, they don't count cycles. And in the downtown area, the, the ones that, that, show, that I can show you here on the right, um, it's basically uh, we have 2.5 million pedestrians every day walking in the downtown area versus the, the cars that, that move around, that look for a, a parking space, or for, it could be jobs, or it could be just, just uh, crossing the downtown area. So we, what we started to say is, to show the authorities is, look, we're, you are making projects for cars and not people that walk. And, and you can see that it's much, it's, there's much more people walking than, than using cars. So this is a, uh, a study that was made for the trips made in Santiago. This is the whole region, not just the municipality of Santiago. And you can see the, the purple is the public transport, I'm sorry, uh, is the trips that are made in by walking or cycling. Uh, the green is the public transport and the blue that is, that is a, li a, li a little less, uh, it's automobiles or private vehicles. So basically, what do we what do we want to accomplish as a team? As me and Miguel in the depart mobility department, is create and prioritize public spaces for sustainable modes. This is an example of Merced Street, where um, where we had three lanes. It's a public transport. When when I say a public transport, a street is where where buses, uh, when buses use and make trips. And here we can see how we took two lanes. And we gave it for a sidewalk. So, what we did is uh, we restricted the the use of or the the space for cars, and gave it to the public transport. Uh, if you if you pass in this street, 
you can only pass uh, uh, with, uh, as a car in the between, uh, between or, or I'll say it another way. Public transport uh, is used every, is used the whole uses the whole day the the street this street Merced. And if you if you're a car, you can't enter uh, between 7 a.m. and and 9 p.m. Uh, so if you want to pass during that 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 that, uh, that interval of the of the day, you have to you can't cross two cameras or you get a ticket. So you basically have to go two blocks and then get out of that street. Uh, what do we what do we want to do with all these projects? We want to acti uh, activate the business and the start the entire street environment. Here we can see how we in San Antonio Street that's all these uh, pictures that I'm showing you are from the downtown area. Uh, we had uh, we had sidewalks that were very narrow, and we took a uh, we took uh, vehicle lanes and made it sidewalks so the people can walk. And you, as you can see, there's always more people than cars. Uh, how do we do it too? We, we if we want to convince people, we have to redistribute the public space equitably. And, and, and by this, I mean, uh, not just take uh, car lanes because we want to, it's just, we have to make it equitably for the, for the, for the uh, proportion of the people that use the street. In this case, there were, uh, you can see up, up in the picture above, there are three lanes for cars and one for parking, the one with an E. And what we did after, this is in Google Street, Street View, uh, we narrowed the, the lanes the three lanes we maintained it, but we made a, a parking uh, uh, space there, uh, and then we did a bike path in both ways. We use the same space, and we reduce also the speed the speed that were, that were uh, the cars taking in, in in that part of the, the street. This is the Latino Street. This is another uh, Portugal Street, and what we say here is we have to we have to always do it with intelligence, efficiency, and common sense. Here we have, uh, as you can see in the, in the picture above, two lanes uh, in, in each direction, but, but, also, but we can see that there's, parks, there, there's parky, uh, park cars in both sides. So we have one and a half lanes for, for the traffic vehicles. So for the vehicles. In the, the picture uh, uh, down, uh, we can see how we made up. We made bike paths uh, for each each uh, for each side, and then we narrowed the 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 vehicle lanes so they can get to. And now we reduce also we reduce the speed. We we got a bike path, and yeah, we got a a, a few conflicts because people wanted uh, to keep the parking spaces. But after uh, the project was uh, was done, after like six months, people, the people in the car and the businesses said oh, that it was better uh, with the bike path than with the uh, parked cars. First of all, because people couldn't see their their business the, when when you travel with the car, and we a problem that we have in Chile is that there's a lot of assaults. Uh, of people that uh, hide between the, the the cars in the night and and assaulted people. So that went down too. And people that live around the Portugal Street were very happy with, with the bike paths and with the, the changes that we made. Well, it's essential that in the, all the initiatives, the mobility in, initiatives that we're talking about are friendly for people. Okay, this is a, a Bandera Street that I will show you uh, later on. Um, but the, when we have to change, if we wanna, we want more pedestrians to come, uh, or cyclists, we have to make it a friendly environment. So, they, so you can call the people to use your, the, the, the street that you're changing, okay? Well, with all of this uh, experience that we had in the, in the first uh, five years of uh, our projects, uh, we then move on to make the second version of the PIM, the mobility plan in 2019. Because we, uh, we, all our experience, we wanted it to provide, provide, it, provide it to the other parts of uh, Chile so that they can uh, learn from our experience. 
So based on the mobility plan, what has been done in Santiago to improve mobility in public spaces, now I'm gonna show you uh, the projects that we uh, have done uh, since we started and how it's been changed, okay? This is uh, Merced and Compañía Street. You can see how the sidewalks were widened and we made it one lane. This is the, we call it the downtown plan or Plan Centro that we had an agreement with the Ministry of Transport to make uh, better streets for people, but, and that were, that were better for the uh, operation of the buses. So they can, they, the idea was to take some car, some automobiles off the, the streets that the buses use. So there will be uh, less, uh, less uh, delay for the, for the buses. All these pictures you're gonna see are in the left, the before and the after the uh, initiative. Here we can see San Antonio Street, the remodeling. Uh, we also had in, uh, in all the blocks in San Antonio, we had a, uh, uh, how you call it, uh, public transport uh, where, where a stop, a bus stop in every block. So we redistributed it in the San Antonio Street. So we didn't have in every block uh, a bus stop. That made it much better for the buses and for the people. Here's a, a, another part where we had parking in Santo Domingo Street, uh, where all the buses passed to, and we gained it as a as a as a as a kind of plaza, an urban uh, space. So now the now it's, it's not in the picture after, but uh, the there um, before the pandemic, before the COVID nineteen, we had uh, the restaurant that took the the tables out and people took co uh, took coffee and and had a social life there. This is a remodeling of Puente Street. Uh, a street that is, is in the national, is like a local market, very um, much people used it and to go buy a lot of things. And um, as you can see before, there were cars, there were uh, parking cars, parked cars, there were trucks that were, that, that were for the commerce. And after, so we, what we did was to close it and make it pedestrian. And now it's a, a, a great place. And people walk there, you, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of life in that street. Uh, this is uh, one of the most recognized uh, uh, initiatives that we had. Uh, this is Bandera Street, the one that I, was gonna, I told you uh, we changed. Um, Bandera Street was uh, because of the, the, the subway that we were constructing, uh, the street was closed because of the of the construction, so it was used by the cars to park every all day long, uh, from to make load and, and, and all the, the kind of uh, uh, of the work that, that they used it for. So we said, uh, in only twenty two thousand people used this uh, this street uh, when we counted before with the initiative. Twenty two thousand people walked through Bandera. What we said to the to the mayor was, why don't we close it and do something interesting? And he said, okay, surprise me. So what? Me and Miguel uh, went to went walking one day and said, what could we do? And Miguel said, uh, let's paint it. Why don't we paint it? Make it. Where do we paint it? The street. Let's paint the street. Okay. So we we talked to some people. Uh, in, in a bank and we got interested and we painted the, the whole street. And as you can see, this was basically what we did. We removed all the cars um, and we gave it to the people and people started walking and, and it was very recognized ar around the world. Um, so uh, the, other, the other thing is that uh, this was a, an initiative that was to be for a short period of time because uh, after the subway was constructed or, or was finished, we had to give, give back the street to the, to the automobiles and the public transport. But the initiative was, so, was such a su success that they, they kept it in a still like this. Excuse me, I'm gonna take and drink a little water. Well, the other things we did was uh, 26 kilometers of new bike path in Santiago. We connected the ones that, that, that already exist that, that weren't much 
but this is this is the the uh, by far the the most that it has been constructed in in Chile. What are we doing now? This is a uh, the one in after is a picture, and the, the picture in, in the right is a is a is just a, a drawing. But now we we started to work on this uh, street uh, in December December two thousand twenty. And I want to show you how it's the same thing as we did in the downtown plan. It basically is to uh, take lanes, give, give, uh, keep uh, two lanes and, 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 and eliminate one just for, for, for the sidewalks. This is another part of uh, uh, McIver Street that I was showing you. Uh, as you can see uh, uh, above in the picture above, <clears throat> there's a, that's how it looks like in the street view. You can see a lot of uh, lanes that, that are there because there's a, a, it's like a bus station in, 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 the, in the street, in, in the downtown area. So we said, why don't we reduce that? And in, if you can see in the, down, in the picture above, uh, below, uh, you can see some painting there. That's a new urban plaza that we're making, uh, we're calling the traffic safety. It's gonna be for people so they can, the, the Children can go and learn about the uh, the traffic and the, the traffic law, and and the idea is because the people that live there don't have any public space to go there. It's only buildings, so that's going to be the only place they're going to have around so the kids can go play. And and that was a uh, that was the authorities liked it a lot. Basically, the downtown uh, plan started with one street, and the the authorities liked it. And it's been a change, including a change of governments. Of uh, as as you can as you as you know, it's like uh, the the Republicans changed to Democrats, and they still let everybody like the the project, so they kept it, and that's what that makes us very happy. This is another remodeling that we're doing right now. We started in January. Uh, it basically is a uh, is Alonso Valle Street and other another three streets that we are remodeling, and the yellow things that you see there are like it's like the Mankiver Plaza. There there's uh, urban plazas, urban spaces, so people could go sit to get a cup of coffee, talk. That's the idea. As you can see in the in the left, uh, this is how it looks. It looks right now. Uh, it's on only cars. Uh, uh, Park there is is very ugly, and what we want to do is on the the one in the right is the same place, and that's what we're doing. It's going to be uh, finished by August. And when this uh, when the pandemic started, uh, me and Miguel started talking. What can we do so we can help the people? How could how can we do it so people can maintain uh, uh, social distance? So we, uh, we gather some information from around the world because we didn't invent this. Uh, we, 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 everything we learned, and some, some of our ideas, but it's always a, a mixture. We said, let's do something so people can, mix, uh, uh, can get social distance. And so we did, this is an example of Agustina Street where uh, we took uh, a, a, a simple uh, part of the, of the street and we painted it and put some posts so that people could walk and make a bike path, uh, the one on the left. So, so, so bikes could, because in, during the pandemic in Chile, in, in Santiago, um, we raised from 60, for 62% more cyclists in, in Santiago because of the COVID-19. This is another street, Mosqueto Street, where, uh, Whereas uh, you can see it's basically a pedestrian street, but there's a lot of cars that were parked all day in the downtown area. So what we do, what we did was uh, uh, painted as a piano. And so people could walk there and just give one link to the, to the cars. We, we made uh, 22 kilometers of, of cycleways that we call it, is basically bike paths, but only with painting. Um, we did this basically to connect the, the, the bike paths, the, the, the network of bike paths that we have. And, and we did it in streets that basically, because how it, it was supposed to be a fast uh, kind of implementation because uh, 
we didn't have much time because of the pandemic and the, the cyclists were, uh, the trips were racing uh, very, very fast. Um, people didn't, because it was better because people didn't use the public transport or because people didn't have money to, to move around. So they started using the bike. So we've implemented this type of uh, this uh, bike path or cycleways that we call it. And in, in residential areas, basically what we, we did is what we have a street with two lanes, but we have parked cars because people park their cars in front of their houses. And you have this one and a half lane then uh, in this half lane that nobody uses. So we did it as a, we, put, we transformed it into a bike path or a cycleway. What our future projects are? Well, as I told you the color street, right? Bandera street, we're making, we wanna make it the third phase because uh, not the whole street was, was painted. And the other, the other one was kept as, as it was. And this is how it was before or how it is still. Uh, park cars both sides in just one lane and people walking through the cars is very ugly, it's very dirty. So it, there's a lot of business. And we talk to the people in the businesses there and they want, they always, they, they, in, in the downtown area, people know or the businesses know that if you pedestrianize any street is the best because the, the, the businesses go up, the sales. So as you can see, in this map, the, the one uh, uh, the below, the two blocks below is what we've done in Bandera and the, like an L, like an inverted L, that's uh, what we want to do now. And what do we want to do? Bandera means flag, okay? And it was named because uh, this uh, person when, when, there, when nobody had the Chilean flag, he had a, 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 a mister had a, a a business and he was very patriotic. So what, we, what he did was uh, he raised the Chilean flag every, every time there was an important, uh, uh, an important day of, in Chile. So it was, so they renamed that street Bandera, flag, flag street. So what we did is we, we talked to the businesses in, 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 in Bandera street and we just said, why don't we do something like this? Pedestrianize, take the cars out, and put flags, <laughs> call it the, 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 it's like a, a way, the flag way, something like that. And, but put all the flags from the world. So we're working on that. Maybe it's gonna be, it's gonna get changed, but that's what, that was our idea to make something new, something different, something that can call the people to go there. Another, another project that we have with Miguel that's very, very difficult to do, but we, we would love we love it if we did it, is the divert traffic, divergent traffic. Basically is, this is the downtown area, the historical, uh, the historical, the historical part of the city is the most important part of the city. Um, so what we wanna do is this, all of the streets cross the downtown area. So many cars just pass through the, the downtown area and, and they, they, they give, they make uh, traffic jams. The the buses go go slower, and there's a there's a lot of problems with cars in the downtown area because there's many people walking. Okay, so what we did is in the red, we said why don't we keep the public transport that can cross uh, the whole downtown area, and the other streets we just make it divert. I mean they won't cross it they, they, if if they go. To a certain place, they have to turn. They have to turn, and then turn again, and you throw them out. Basically, is that. So, if you want to go to somewhere, you have to plan your your trip. You have to know where to get in and where to get out. The idea is to um, make it more free of cars, the the downtown area, and so we can gain more spaces. And in that uh, planification that we have, <clears throat> as you can see, the green uh, the green dots will be new. A pedestrian streets. So that's the idea of what we would like to do. Does uh, a remodeling of another uh, pedestrian street that's Paseo Bull is a very, uh, that's uh, in front of uh, Casa La Moneda, that's, that's like the White House. And the idea is to make it more pedestrian, more uh, safer to walk because it's, it's very old. It's a very old uh, infrastructure. So we want to make it better. And we, we're, we're, 
we talked to the people that lived there and we got uh, participation of the, the citizens. So, and they, they liked our project. So now we're working on it. Okay, and, and this is kind of like the end of the, the excuse me, of the presentation, our obstacles. Uh, it's, it's, it's important to, to tell you what our obstacles were to make all this project because at first, me and Miguel, especially Miguel, suffered a lot of bullying because uh, every, all these uh, projects were uh, not good for the automobile and he was very criticized. Uh, but we kept uh, the idea that it was the sustainable part is the best thing for the city. So what we did was uh, work on um, and against against the weather or something like that. Say, and we we had an, a lot of obstacles. And the the part the 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 word up is in Spanish. I, I forgot to translate it. Sorry, it's an obstacle. Well, what are obstacles? The policies and regulation prioritize the automobile, and that's uh, I, it's basically everywhere in the world. But uh, it's important to say that in Santiago, 25, only 28% of the trips are made by car, okay? And the rest is pedestrian, uh, walking, uh, cycling, and public transport. But yet the, the policies are going for uh, automobiles. There's a false belief that if we increase the infrastructure for cars, it reduces the congestion or traffic jam. That's not true. Uh, I worked eight years in a highway in the traffic, in the, in the safety area, in the operation area. And I, I learned how, how a new highway, it, at first it was very, very good for, for the cars. Uh, after a few years, it's, it's just traffic jam and just calling the people to use the, the cars. And, and it, it was being very, had done a lot of damage to the city. The academic education, uh, in, when I was in university, uh, prioritizes cars. They, they, they taught us to, uh, that, that, that traffic, we had to avoid traffic jam, that, that the car has to have a, have a, um, a clear lane so they, can, they could travel. It, it, it was very much that. And there's still a lot of professionals, uh, colleagues that, that think the same. We don't, but, but it's still, we're still working on convincing people. Uh, studies do not consider sustainable modes of transport. That's what, if you want to make a build, build uh, make a building in Santiago, they're going to ask you for a for a traffic uh, uh, study, but you only have to count cars and maybe public transport, but not cycles or people that walk. Uh, traffic light times in every everywhere <laughs> in Santiago. Uh, prioritize the cars and not pedestrians. And, and especially in the downtown area where there's 2.5 .5 million people walking around, it's very difficult for people uh, that people wait for some, some lights to turn green because the, the accumulation of people is a lot versus a car that is only three or four cars that pass and then 50 people waiting. Um, and the, the last is the fear of criticism. Uh, if, if a part of the road is given to sustainable modes, I call it pedestrian, cyclist, or public transport. It's very uh, complicated when, when there's a lot of criticism, there's a lot of fear from people, from authorities to make, this, um, make these changes. And that will be it. <laughs> Thank you, and excuse my English if, I, uh, if, I, if you didn't understand me, I, <laughs> it's been a long time. So I have to think in Spanish and talk in English. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. All right, great. Um, let me open it here. Um, there was a, a quick question in the chat. If uh, there was a possibility of getting your PowerPoint, uh, is that something you could share, Alexis? Of course, I'm gonna change because uh, all the lights are is giving me behind me. So, yeah, yes, I can send you the the PowerPoint. No, there's no problem. All right, thank you. So, um, uh, Miguel, algo que quieras comentar? 
y lo traduzco. Uh, estás en mute. Primero que todo, a agradecer a ti y a la universidad por mostrar lo que el trabajo que estamos haciendo acá en Santiago, que bueno, tú ya lo conoces, y, y agradecer también a Alexis que por lo que entendí un poco en la presentación, le ha salido bastante bien. <laughs> so, Miguel saying that he wants to thank, uh, you know, our class and also the university for inviting him and, uh, and uh, what he understood from Alexis, I uh, think he did it very well. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, so I'll, I'll ask David maybe to start uh, the question session. Uh, do you have any questions, David? Um, well, he answered actually all of my questions at the very end, but I mean, I was very um, impressed by the presentation. I think you hear a lot about sustainable practices in um, urban design, but in actually creating, I think, public or urban spaces um, on the street, I think was um, really interesting. And then even went a step further into making them actual landmarks for the city. Um, I thought it was very um, just creative and it kind of seemed like the sustainable aspect of, you know, reducing cars was kind of the least of the benefits almost um, as you created all these really nice public spaces. Um, but yeah, you answered most of my questions. I was just wondering like how the public would react um, to all of this, but Um, as you mentioned, I think you said they came around at the end after they saw the improvements. Yeah, yeah. The at first it was very hard. Uh, Miguel had to do a lot of convincing because uh, people didn't want changes. People are used to what they what they have. If you uh, take away from them the parking spaces. Uh, for their business, they say, nobody's going to come here to buy me. And then you can see in a block, there's like 15 cars versus, versus I don't know, if, because if you widen the sidewalks, more people will walk, more people will see your business. And that's what people started to uh, learn with, because of the projects, because people are very afraid of changes. Uh, and, and it was very hard at the beginning. Now, after the, the awards, uh, Miguel gets a lot of calls that of, of how, wh where, we, where can we do this? When we want to do this, we want to change this. And we have ideas and the people, are, and the people are, uh, in Santiago are very happy with the, with the work. So it was difficult at first. We, we were bullied, you know, in the, the, we put a bike path. The, the, the traffic jam was uh, the, the, the bike path's fault and, and not the cars. So, <laughs> It, it was very, it was very difficult at, at first, but now people are changing. The authorities uh, are, are are looking for for better public spaces, and, and it's been a great job. Thank you. Um, anybody else um, would like to? I have some questions, but I'll let you guys ask them first. I have a quick question. Uh, you mentioned in the future project, the divergent traffic one, that there would be some difficulties associated with it. And I was just curious if you could elaborate more on what those would be specifically. Okay, thank you for the question. Um, yeah, the, the thing with divert traffic, what we want to do is uh, not allow the cars or the automobiles to cross the downtown area. And if you, and then we have to have, a, this is a, a, an idea we have, we made a study, but then we have to have the authorities that, that, that would approve it because it's very hard to change the, the mentality of people, especially people that live in the downtown area, um, because you're going to have to say to a, a person that lives in a building, look, you have to enter to your building in, by the, in this street and then go out by the other one. You can't go as you, as you could do, did it before. You have, you don't have to have a, a longer trip, a longer trip, it's one minute, two minutes, but, but that, that, uh, that initiative is uh, uh, very complicated for uh, when I talk about, when I said about our colleagues that didn't like uh, the, to change the things, they, they, they just worried about the automobile traffic jams and, and sometimes we have traffic jam everywhere because 
full of cars, like every city. So, so we have to, what do we have to do? We have to support the public transport so people get off the car and come to the downtown area in, in, in public transport. I remember when I lived in, 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 in Toronto, Canada, uh, I lived in Scarborough and I remember when my dad said that we have to go downtown to go to the doctor and then we, we had to take the public transport because we knew it was very expensive to, to pay a parking there or it was very hard, you had to go to a highway and you get stuck in a traffic jam. So, so we got used to using the public transport then, but that, that's the difficult thing. We just started here. Maybe you, you guys are, are, are years uh, ahead, but, but we're starting the, and we're start, starting to change the mentality of the, especially the authorities. Yeah, no, we're not, we're not, we're years behind. There's okay, but, uh, but I heard of, uh, I, I read some, things about your new minister of transport and he's very uh, he has a, a sustainable vision as, a, as I could uh, I read yeah he, uh, Buttig about, um, he's trying to change something. yeah we hopefully he'll he'll get it yeah and so that'll, that'll be great um any okay more questions we have some we have some time um, I have two questions uh, the first question is Taking these parking spots away from the road, are there more parking garages to park the cars? Um, because people are still going to use cars even if they can't park. Uh, and so that's the first question. And then the second question is, um, we keep being told in school that you want to provide some feeling of safety uh, between the cars and pedestrians on the sidewalk. And I was noticing in a lot of the images you have, the sidewalk goes right over, then there's the road, there's maybe some bollards, um, but there's really no barrier, even if it's like, a, like vegetation or something that helps give that sense of security and safety. Um, if you could talk about that too. That's it. Okay, uh, the, the first question, thank you for the question. Um, the first question is that uh, the, what we're eliminating is the uh, park, the parking in, uh, as you can say, in the street in downtown area, because there's a, also there's underground uh, parking and the underground parking in the whole downtown area, uh, when it's, it's used at 70%, 70 that means that there's 30% that is not being used and that could be used in the, on the part, uh, in the under, um, under parking, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Sometimes I am speaking, I'm speaking in Spanish. Um, in, in that, that's what we're, that's what we're uh, pointing at. We, we, wanna, we wanna make that 70, 90, but uh, also as uh, we eliminate uh, the, the parking spaces in the street, we're telling the people not to come in cars, not to come in cars uh, to the downtown area because you have to pay the downtown, the under uh, parking and it's much more expensive. So the, the idea is if you wanna come to uh, downtown area, try to come in public transport. And so we have to give the, the, the buses the, 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 the alternatives so they can move faster and people think that they're not wasting their time. And the other question was about ah the, the barriers and sidewalks and streets, yeah. Wh what we've done is uh, also is the we had uh, lanes that were three point uh, three point five meters wide. Now that we're, we're making it two point seven three, so people so the cars uh, slow their 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 slow down, and and when when they get to the downtown area in those streets the car or the driver knows he's in a pedestrian area. He feels he's in a pedestrian area, so he low, lowers the, 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 the speed. And the other thing is that in, in the downtown area, you can uh, speed too much uh, because the, the, there's, there's too many traffic lights, the, there are too many cars. So what we've done is that, uh, um, how we want to reduce cars, then we have to narrow the, the lanes so they can, they can. That's the idea and, and it's worked very, very nice so far. Cool. All right. Anybody else?
question for Alexis. I don't have a question, but thank you for the presentation. It was so nice. You actually made us miss the real city, you know? <laughs> I really miss being in a real city environment. So thank you for that. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll, have, I'll, I'll throw in a question. Um, how did you guys deal with, or is there a service like Uber or Lyft that uses automobiles for transportation in Santiago? And how did you guys deal with that? Yeah, there, there's Uber, there's, I don't remember, I don't use them, many, but there's uh, Cabify, I think the other one is. Uh, yeah, there, there are services, but um, there's not a, there's still not a restriction of uh, some, some in some streets, as I, as I was talking about, the, the public transport street, uh, they don't have uh, restrictions. And that, that's what we're working on. That's the divert traffic, diverting traffic uh, project that we want to do is, is to restrict the, 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 the use of the streets in the downtown area. Uh, and, and we, we talked once with, um, I think it was Uber, uh, when, when we said, uh, when we, we talked and we said, if we did this plan, uh, they, they have to have uh, uh, instructions for the drivers to get in, 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 in uh, to make the plan planification of the trip that the, and have all the guidelines so they can, they cannot enter the wrong road something say like that but but there's no restrictions right now for the uber and all that okay i don't and know if i i, I answered your question no no you, you did you did so they're, they're gonna have to follow the same rules that everybody else yes exactly we have a uh we have a uh, plan another plan that we, we didn't put here is that we would like that the, all the taxis or the cabs that go into the downtown area were electric but that's much okay. more ahead because because we have a uh, uh, taxis that move around the, the downtown area and we're talking with them so they can well Miguel is talking with them so they can turn into electric and they can get uh, uh, some money from the state or some from the government so they can uh, turn into uh, fossil to uh, electric yeah that that brings me to the the second question um, which is uh, two parts um, one is after all this, these projects that you guys done, have you measured like the reduction of uh, like for instance, CO2, for instance, in the, in the area of uh, greenhouse gases? And, uh, and, and what do you think is the future if we have um, autonomous vehicles uh, in, in the cities? Well, um, yeah, we've done measures for, uh, there was a uh, NAMA, the, 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 uh, the um, environmental direction of the municipality worked on and they got uh, with all the mobility projects, they, 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 they measured the, how, it, how it went down. I don't have the, the, the data, but I know it went down. It was really, uh, it was a success in, in the downtown area. Uh, uh, what was the other question? The other question was about the... What do you guys think of the future in regards to um, autonomous vehicles? Oh, autonomous vehicles. Well, uh, uh, well we, we, I've seen, I, I've read some, some things and, and I talked to, we talked to some of the people that, that, were, that wanted to bring them to, to, to Chile. Um, they, they always, the new things come to us. Uh, I don't know. It's, it's difficult. It's, it's difficult to um, the autonomous vehicles because it's a it's a computer and it can fail. I don't know, but uh, but the thing is, what I would like most is that every car had a speed limit. I I, I when we talk with Miguel is why do they sell uh, cars that can go two hundred kilometers per hour when they hear the the most is one hundred and twenty. <laughs> right. And unless it was an ambulance or a police car, uh, we the, I think autonomous cars are. I don't have much information. And maybe Miguel has. Uh, you can ask him because he, he he received the people there. But um, but I think that it's is is. I, I would like more more. We, we fo focus on on the cycles, the pedestrians, and the public transport. Uh, uh, 
we can turn every car into autonomous car, but we're going to have cars and we, we want more friendly spaces for friendly streets for, for Santiago. Right. Good. Yeah. Thank you. Um, anybody else uh, questions? I have one more question, actually. Um, the projects that you talked about, the roads that you painted, I'm curious, like, what your teams looked like. Like, what kind of people did you need to make those kinds of things happen? You talk about Bandera Street, where it was all painted? Yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah there were um, artists that we talked to. Uh, when, we, when we thought about the idea, we didn't know how we were going to paint. It was just said put a lot of colors and do something artistic. Um, there were, uh, this, uh, this uh, artist is very recognized in New York and Santiago. He, after what well, he did in Bandera, he went to Korea and out Saudi Arabia and in other places because they, they liked it so much. Um, but they were artists. They, we, talk, we, we started talking to artists and said, uh, um, first we asked the people that made, I don't know if it's, it's called in English graffitis, where, mm -hmm. where you, in the wall, but then, but then the, this, this uh, artist that also made graffitis made, said he could do it and he would love to do it and he did a great job. So uh, they were artists, it, it wasn't us. <laughs> we're not that creative. <laughs> okay, excellent. Any other question? Uh, yes. Can you tell us a little bit about uh, how did you navigate all this bureaucratic process to get the approbation for doing this? Uh, yeah, there, there are, there's a lot of uh, complications, uh, especially when we have this manual that says you have to do things like this and not like the new way. Uh, but there was a, uh, because of, we have to convince authorities. We, we went, uh, Miguel, Miguel went to the authorities in that, in that, in that year was uh, the mayor, Santiago, and said, we can do this, convinced it, and then convinced the Minister of Transport, big people for saying like that, because the people in the middle or below, they want to keep things the same, uh, basically, not all of them, but most of the, our colleagues said, no, leave it like that, why, why, why would you change that? It, it, it works that way. Um, so yeah, it was, it was very complicated at first. They, 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 they threatened us because we were putting the lanes too narrow and the people that the, the cars were going to crash sideways. And, and, and we said, no, it was to reduce the, the speed limit. And, and then we have to convincing, a lot of convincing. It was very difficult because we had nothing at first. We had to do one thing and at a time. And after we did the first big one, uh, people liked it. There was Merced Street when we took two lanes and made it sidewalks. Uh, the, the businesses and the people reacted. Uh, and also, also illumination, uh, lights. The, um, the, we, in all these projects, we, we, we put a lot of lights so people feel safe in, at night too. So it was very used in the day and in the night. So the business went up. The people were happy, the people first safe, felt safer and the cars went slower. So it was a win-win situation that uh, we had to convince, but it was very hard at first. It's, it's very difficult to tell a, an authority that uses the car every day to get to his job and then get to his house to, his house, to tell him there's people uh, in, in public transport that are, that are taking a long time, that they're all together and that, that the cyclists feel Feel, don't feel safe, but the pedestrians don't like to walk in the sidewalk and they walk in the street, things like that. Excellent. Any other question? Comments? I have one more question. Mm -hmm. um, is the public transportation option, is it very, is that infrastructure really, um, how am I trying to say this? Is, is it easy to get around in public transportation? Is it very extensive? Because I could, I, I understand like wanting to take the cars away so people don't want to use the cars, but if they don't, if it's not convenient or easy to take an alternative way to get down. It's like you almost have to get the buses 
and the trans and stuff in place first before you can start taking the other stuff away? Was that already in place? Thank you. Yeah, it's a, it's a very good question. Uh, as we worked in the municipality of Santiago, we had, a, we had to focus on what we wanted our city to look like, our city to be like. Uh, we understand that the public transport is not our, our responsibility, is a, is a ministry of transport. And yes, for, I don't know how you say the, 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 the city, the, the people that live around the city uh, and the suburbs or something like that. Yeah, I don't know if it's called like that. Uh, uh, they, they take a lot of time uh, in buses uh, to get to the downtown area or to get, to get to the more uh, high area in the, in the, in the Cordillera, in the, in the mountains where, where a lot of people, or the people, the rich people live. Um, it, 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 it's very difficult when, when, when we say this and, and you have, you are right because, uh, people say, but yeah, but public transfer is not as good as it should be. Is it is a good system, but it's not as good as, as it should be. So you're changing the downtown area, but yet we, we understand that we have to, how is the downtown area. And then if we, got, we start expanding this, this situation, uh, the public transport will, will get better too. If we take cars off, uh, if we uh, decrease the, the number of cars that go to the downtown area, that means that the public transport will be, will be less uh, a company with the automobiles. And, and, and in, that, in that way, the, the, pub, the bus will go faster, things like that, because we have a public uh, a bus lanes that are only for buses, but the cars take it anyway, because there's no fiscal, there's no uh, ticket given to the, to the, to the driver. So if we, if we take a lot of uh, cars, then we have better public transport. We understand it like that. We have another, uh, a good subway uh, network, and, but we have, to, we have to get better the, the, the buses. The, there's a lot of work to do there, but we understand that we work in the municipality and we, we want the municipality like this, and that's, how we, that's what we want to do. So the other ones have to uh, accommodate to what we want to do We're in, the, in the center of Santiago. Right. So I guess uh, following up on that, the question would be, is there public participation in these projects before or, or do people just get surprised uh, by the projects? There's public participation. Uh, much more now. Uh, in the last three years, the people uh, are getting, uh, are very uh, connected to, to the city. They, they want to participate. And we make them participate. And we think after what we've shown, uh, there are allies because we, 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 we try to make better uh, neighborhoods. We want to make better streets. And, and usually the people in the downtown area walk. Uh, it, it's, I, I showed you 28% of people, the trips in Santiago are, are by cars, but in the municipality of Santiago uh, it's like the 10% because people are used to walking, it's very, very short trips. Mm -hmm. And then, and so they understand that, that the walking is better or public transport to get to the downtown area is like five minutes. So they understand that. And, and when they take the public transport and they, they, get, they get in the traffic jam because of the cars, they think it's too much cars. The people don't live here. People come from other places just to get, to give us traffic jam. So, the change is, is, is a lot, and there's a lot of cyclists too. As I said, after the pandemic, people started using the, the, the bikes. In August of last year, there were no bikes. To, basically, the, we couldn't find bikes to buy because people were using the bikes. So, so that's, uh, they were waiting for, for um, they were coming from China, there were people waiting for bikes because they thought it, they, they, um, they thought it was better for the social distance and everything. Right. Excellent. All right. We'll take one more question if anybody has this one. Um, I have one. Yeah. Um, I was just, you kind of just mentioned it. Um, kind of like how else COVID has affected the design process. Because I know you, you kind of mentioned it, but I know like in architectural design, it's kind of changing a lot about sustainable practices um, and things you have to think about. So I was just wondering how else um, COVID has kind of 
made you think about designing these spaces or if it's changed anything? I'm sorry, I didn't, I didn't hear who, who has changed my, my thoughts? Um, COVID-19. The pandemic. Uh, COVID-19, COVID I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I didn't answer. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, COVID-19 was, uh, you, as you can say, it, it's, it's, not, it's not nice to say, but it was very good for us in the way, in the sense that uh, people started opening to other modes of transport, not just the car. There are people that were scared and they use cars for everything because they're scared to go in public transport. Uh, but there's a lot of youth the, of, or youngsters that started using the bike um, and started demanding for more spaces. The people started in, in, in Santiago generally started demanding for better sidewalks so they could keep the, the, the social distance because you had a, you had a, um, a how do you say this, a store where, where people cannot get in, they have to wait outside and then you have a sidewalk, a sidewalk of uh, 80 centimeters, 50 centimeters, so you have to walk in the street because there are people waiting outside the store. And people started saying, hey, the streets are not made for people. You have three lanes for, for cars and here we're, you have a pe people waiting outside the store and then I have to walk in, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a vehicle lane because I have no space in the sidewalk. So people started demanding us, as I show you in Agustina, demanding more space for walking, <clears throat> for cycling. So it, it, the COVID uh, has helped and people open their mind about sustainable modes of transport. Excellent. Okay. Um, well, I think uh, if there aren't any, any more questions we can um, sort of uh, end the, the conference, I mean, the, the lecture. I wanna thank uh, uh, Alexis for uh, uh, presenting uh, on behalf of the uh, of his of his office and his team, uh, and also Miguel for uh, uh, being here with us uh, and uh, sharing all the stuff that he's started and uh, and did. And I met Miguel uh, a few years ago in Berlin, and then I went to visit him in Santiago. So I, I got to saw that great street, that one that was painted. Um, it's a, it's a, it's a great environment. It's a really, it was full of people and it, uh, it's, it's really has a nice scale and uh, great, uh, really fun to walk ar uh, around to. So I was really glad that I could see that. Um, so I wanna thank you both, uh, Alex and Miguel. Uh, you have any final sort of comments? Uh, Miguel, uh, gracias. Uh, algo que quieras decir para finalizar? Mm. Eh. Bueno, la verdad, las cosas es que para poder hacer este tipo de proyectos hay que tener una convicción y, y hay que ser, eh, continuar, continuar, porque uno se encuentra con muchos obstáculos. Entonces, lo que se busca acá es tratar de, de convencer a las otras personas que efectivamente es un buen proyecto y una vez que se convencen, tengan por seguro que el proyecto va a continuar y va a salir lo mejor posible y el cambio se puede hacer. Yes. So Miguel basically said, you know, you have to have the conviction and the capacity to make people think different, right? Uh, convince people that these projects are going to be made. And once you have that, then projects can, can continue. So uh, I, I think the key word there is conviction. Uh, and, and I'm, you know, coming from an, a city in Mexico where, where we have still uh, transportation mafias, you know, uh, taxis and, and all these guys who don't want to change. Um, you, it's really difficult. And, and, and so it's really powerful what you guys have done in Santiago. Um, so uh, again, thank you very much. Uh, uh, Alex, Alexis, any, any final comment? Um, thank you. Thank you for the invitation. Uh, uh, of to, so we can show you what we done as a team with Miguel. Uh, for us, it's very important that people, not only in Chile, but also around the world, uh, know about the things that we do, and and we know about the things that you do, so we can uh, support each other when we want to make projects like 
that make will make a difference. Uh, and thank you, thank you for your time. And sorry if I if you didn't understand me in some parts of the of the presentation. I was very nervous talking in English again. <laughs> oh, you did great. Um, and you. uh, you're going to be able to see your uh, your talk. Uh, we can we put these. Um, if you don't mind, uh, we, we put these uh, um, uh, lectures uh, uh, or these talks in the uh, school's website uh, and YouTube site as well. So once uh, it's up, I'll send you the link. And so there's a lot more people who can uh, see, see this. So people will laugh at me then. <laughs> <laughs> My old friends who live in Canada. Why would you, you talk like this now? Maybe your friends. <laughs> We won't. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you very much, everybody. Gracias. Uh, and I'll see you uh, in the next, next class. Gracias. 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 <laughs>